Parag, it's so great to have you here in the office in the Google conference room. You see the big Google logo right behind me. For me, if I look back at my own journey with technology, it started during my freshman year in college with a Sun Microsystems workstation that ran Netscape, the browser. And it opened up the world of information to me and to all of us. And it was a time where HTML pages ran amok, and it was a fun time. The web has evolved a lot since then to CSS and Ajax and JavaScript and all kinds of other cool technologies that now is the web to us today. And great companies like Google Index it, made it available to us to search it and to transact on it. But three years ago, there's this next seminal moment that occurred, which was the launch of ChatGPT. And those of us who saw it before it launched, we were like mind blown that LLMs have truly arrived on the scene and the world is about to change. And then since then have come agents and other technologies that have made LLMs a lot more useful to all of us and specifically agents. And you are building a version of the internet that is going to be home for not users like you and me, but for agents. So tell us more about Parallel. At Parallel, we're building the web as it must exist for AIs. Fundamentally, our belief is that AIs will use the web way more than humans ever have. And when they do that, an entirely new web must exist. It will be backed by a new set of technologies and a new set of business models. The very first products we're building are APIs for AI agents to be able to search and access the web to do work. Let's talk about the most popular agents out there today, coding agents. We all use them. The very first generation of coding agents mostly looked at our code and edited it. Slowly, they started getting access to do more and run commands. And now, every coding agent uses the web. It uses the web for a few different things. Oftentimes, what the LLM remembers as the way to use a package isn't right. So it must look up real-time documentation from the web for the version of the package your repo currently depends on. Sometimes it gets stuck. And in order to debug, must search the web to figure out how to fix problems it has run into. And now we're increasingly seeing coding agents even do work that you would associate with a product manager on competitive products or competitive intelligence. And all of these things require the web. In fact, what we see is as you take any agent and you give it the web, over time, the amount of use for the web in an agent keeps increasing because our expectations of the agent keep evolving. Awesome. Well, as you can see, there's this beautiful logo of an amazing company, which we backed in 1999. And 26 years later, we sit here and we think about Parallel and the moment that we're in today. What's fundamentally different about the web today as it was 26 years ago? Well, I was too young 26 years ago. But I imagine at the time, most people weren't on the web and using it every day like we are today. It was really early. People were figuring out how to go build things on the web, what the web looks like structurally from a technology perspective. The business models weren't invented. I think we're in the same moment as it relates to the web's second user, which is going to be an AI. So there's a few AIs out there. There's more of them every day and every week. We're starting to figure out some of the technology pieces. We're starting to figure out some of the business model pieces, but it's really, really early. And this new web, call it a parallel web for AIs, isn't yet at scale. But some of us can see it. Some of us are using it. And it'll be everywhere. So is the opportunity bigger than the web from 26 years ago? It has to be, right? We just said that AIs will use the web a lot more than humans ever have. And so now if you think about what's possible, if you think about how underused all of the web is in terms of information that no one accesses or knowledge that doesn't get combined because no one goes and puts two pieces together. 
the impact of the web will only increase and the old human web will translate in its impact to the AI web, but the AI web will make things possible which have never been possible. So let's just make things a bit more practical. How does an agent call parallel and how does it translate into the end result that an agent that calls parallel produces? One of the products we built at Parallel is our search API product. It's a very simple API which agents can use to search and access content on the web. It's as simple as adding a API as a tool into your agent or adding an MCP server into your agent. And all of a sudden, any agent you might have has access to all of the web. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting is people build all kinds of agents with all kinds of tools. People give the agent the ability to plan. People give the agent a file editing tool. People give the agent access to some internal data set you have, some private data set you have, like your email or some company information you have. And now to that agent, you can give it the web. And now you can ask it to go do something. Now what an agent might do is it'll go search the web using parallel. It'll gain some insights. It might write it in a file. It might make a new plan. It might go search your internal information. Then it might search the web. And as a result of all of these actions, it'll go do real work for you. So if agents do all this, what does this mean in terms of what the web looks like and the infrastructure that needs to evolve and change for this reality of AI agents to come to bear? So far what I described was an agent using the web and searching the web just like a human would. Let's now think about how agents might be different from humans. When we do work on the web, let's think of someone, let's say insurance underwriter, they might sometimes spend minutes and hours researching the web to understand the business they're about to underwrite. What do they do? They go search the web, they get some 10 blue links, they click on one, they go read and they understand. They go back, search some more, go to three different links, search and understand something else. New questions come to mind or they move on to the second part of their workflow. And they keep doing this for an hour. Now, when agents use the web, what changes? Number one, they're no longer issuing keyword search queries. They're issuing deeper search queries and declaring deeper intent. Number two, they're not just getting 10 blue links. They're getting straight up high signal tokens. When humans search the web, they're limited the web search tool is kind of limited to our patience, which is about a second. When agents search the web, agents can be more patient for much better, higher signal results. As a result of this, you get to rebuild all of the search infrastructure to optimize for agents and benefits you get by optimizing for agents versus humans. We've already shown in our products is very, very significant in terms of what becomes possible when you build tools just for agents. Now, we can talk all day about how business models change, but I'll pause there. You ran one of the largest internet properties and the one has extreme real-time requirements and extreme reliability requirements. What are the lessons that you learned in terms of just keeping something like Twitter up and running at all times to feed our need for information? I'll answer that question, but I'll also answer First, another question. What are the lessons we might have learned in building Twitter or all of the web properties as have existed that no longer apply? So for humans, right, like you really build products where you are inferring what people want. It's either based on just their navigational cues through long-term understanding of what they typically want, other implicit signals, you're limited to a very narrow time range. Like if you take more than a second, you lose users. If you go much faster, like 100 milliseconds, you don't gain any new users. So that's a very narrow latency bound. And then the output must be small enough to fit on roughly one screen or two screens. If you give too much content, no one's going to read it. With AIs, you get to unlearn all of those design patterns that we have learned for humans. Like you can ask the agent to tell you what it wants in more detail, and it will. You can take more time 
and it's going to be patient because it's going to do long range work. Sometimes the agent wants you to produce a very tiny answer. Sometimes an agent wants you to produce a large amount of data so that it can go dig through it. Mm -hmm. And so you now get to change the entire optimization field, the entire systems field and explore it in a way we never get to explore in this last era of technology building. But now what's similar? You got to build large scale systems. Web scale systems are web scale systems. You have to build reliable systems which operate at many nines of reliability. You have to build predictability into your systems so that you can manage them as you evolve them. And you have to build velocity in how fast you can develop and improve the systems you're building. And therein lies the opportunity for Parallel to make history. Thank you so much, Parag, for the time. And we're so honored to be in partnership with you. We're thrilled to partner with Yuma Moon and Kleiner. And it's especially appropriate sitting in this room having this conversation.